Hey everyone, Ronan here, and I want to welcome you all to Season 2, Part 10 of What If Ash Was Born in Unova. But before we get into today's video, I just want you guys to check out this number right here on the screen. This is the subscribe to unsubscribe ratio. And as you can see, the people that are unsubscribed that are watching my content far exceeds the ones that are subscribed. So if you can do me a favor, just hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss out on any of my content. Anyway, let's get in to part 10 of What If Ash Was Born in Unova Season 2. I hope you enjoy. Genesect Unleashed. Today, we pick up with Ash, Roxy, Iris, and Silent as they arrive back in Verbank City. Man, it's been a year since I've been home, Roxy says, as they step off the boat. Yeah, I wonder how your dad's doing, Ash says, but they won't have to wait long as here comes Pop Roxy barreling down the pier towards the group. Silent and Iris flinch as they hear him screaming Roxy's name. Surprise, she asks what's wrong. Is there a problem with the gym? Out of breath, Pop says no. It's... It's, and then hands her a letter. This was delivered today. Roxy, curious about this, opens up the envelope. It's addressed, Dear Roxy, we are pleased to announce that we have selected you as one of two musicians to perform at this year's Pokemon League festivities. Due to your performance at the Nimbasa Gym and the recommendation of the gym leader, Elisa, we are proud to add you to this year's card. Please RSVP your response by this date. Sincerely, the Pokemon League Committee. Roxy screams in excitement. What is it, Roxy? Iris asks. I've been invited to perform at the Pokemon League this year. This this is the big break I've been waiting for. Dad, do you know what this means? I do. And Pop Roxy turns to reveal he's gathered her band. And we have some even better news, the old man states. You'll be able to practice at Pokestar Studios until your show. Roxy smiles. Boys, we got some work to do. They all nod. One month is all they have to prepare. Well, guys, it looks like I'll see you in a month. I gotta get going at this. Ash, Iris, and Silent tell Roxy goodbye. She's gonna stay in Verbank while they head back to Esprisha City. Roxy and her dad then head to the gym as the group heads to the Pokemon Center to stock up on supplies before they make the three-day trek to Ash's home city. While at the center, Ash tells Silent and Iris he would like to stop by Flossessi Ranch on his way back to see his Pokemon. Iris doesn't have a problem with this as it's on the way. Silent then chimes in. Hey Iris, I heard that Elder lives by there. Is that true? It is. We should stop by and see him, she says. Good. It's been a while since I've seen him, so it would be nice to catch up. The group then gathers their supplies, preparing to head out. But as they head to the door, the power in the center starts to flicker. What's going on, everybody questions. Nurse Joy then tells everyone not to panic. It appears that the Verbank complex has developed some issues in the generator that supply the town's power, but things should be back to normal soon. Wanted to make sure everything is okay, Iris wants to go check up on things. Ash and Silent are okay with this, so the group heads off in a rush. But before they even enter the complex, they can see that something's wrong. Smoke bellows from the complex into the sky. The group knows that this has to be something that they can't ignore, knowing that Team Plasma once had dealings in the area. Heading into the complex, all our heroes see is panic. The local police are herding the wild Pokemon away from the epicenter of the problem. Ash, Iris, and Silent begin to ask what the problem is, but are getting incomplete answers from anyone they talk to. They do make out one thing is certain. The cause is an unknown Pokemon at the heart of it. Choosing to split up, Iris heads east, Silent heads west, while Ash and Riolu head south. As the group fans out, the damage they find gets more severe. Something powerful has been through here, Iris thinks. She follows the trail of destruction that leads to the edge of the eastern side of the complex. What she sees is a Pokemon that horrifies her to her core. Over with Silent, he has sent out Simisage. As the path that he's on leads them into the forest on the west side. Trees are leveled as Simisage is moving towards something that it sees off in the distance. When the monkey freezes in fear. Over with Ash, Riolu has locked onto something's aura. Actually, it's three things. Three powerful things. Ash and Riolu sense that this isn't something that they can go in underestimating. This synergy between the two of them puts them both in the same mental state, causing Riolu to begin to glow in a surging aura. Ash thinks this is strange. Riolu has never started a battle with this level of intensity, but the duo won't have to wait long. As they come to the south 
south side of the complex and the three targets that Riolu was sensing come into view. These Pokemon are rampaging, blasting everything in sight with a laser mounted on their back. However, Riolu's presence captures their attention. Hey, stop, Ash yells. There are three that stand here, one being an off color of the other two, more red than anything. Ash pulls out his Pokedex, but has no information on these Pokemon. If it is a Pokemon, then a voice echoes in the mind of Riolu and its trainer. Home! What happened to our home? What? Who, Ash thinks? But Riolu knows it's the Pokemon before them, specifically the red one. Home, Ash asks? What do you mean, home? The red Pokemon demands to know what this human did with their home, yelling so loud that the pain Ash experiences from the voice in his head causes him to curl over. Sensing this, Riolu won't wait any longer, firing an Orosphere at the leader of this group. It strikes before the red one can respond, but it appears to cause no damage. This does, however, stop Ash's pain. Wow, that was intense. Riolu is preparing another attack, but Ash says wait, trying to communicate with these foreign Pokemon, but it's no use. The red one appears to be unreasonable, and has something that appears to be mind control over the other two. The three Robobugs fire a blast from each of their cannons at Ash. Riolu, wanting to protect its trainer, jumps in the way, blocking the attacks with its aura shield. But these Pokemon are strong, and Riolu is unable to hold the attacks off for long, being enveloped in the process. Ash yells to his starter as it drops from the damage. The three Pokemon then watch as Ash rushes to the side of his Pokemon, but they pay this no mind as their leader's eyes glow red and the three of them fly off north, heading out of the complex. Ash tries to wake up Riolu, but it's out cold. Panicking, Ash picks it up and heads back to the entrance, searching for his friends. He eventually finds them, but they look no better. Silent and Iris go on with a recap of their events, which are all similar, except for one thing. The Pokemon Iris battled, at first, didn't want to harm her. It was more scared than anything, but then its eyes glowed red, and it attacked. Fracture and Servine could barely hold it off before it suddenly stopped and flew off. Ash then tells Iris the red one he battled appeared to be their leader, and had some sort of mind control over the other two. Riolu then finally begins to wake up, to Ash's relief. The group then wonders what their next move will be, when another explosion can be heard off in the distance. Iris and Ash look at each other. There's only one place that could have come from, so they head off, ready for round two. Over at Pokestar Studios, Roxy and her band are in full swing with her dad looking on. Man, she's really gotten good while she's been away. Almost like her experience is what's fueling her music. She's going to be great. She will definitely make it to levels that I'd never dreamed of. But this moment of pride is interrupted when an explosion rocks the studio, and the area that Roxy and her band were practicing in loses power. What the? Roxy yells, who killed the tunes? Then another explosion rocks the area again, this time much closer to the band. This isn't good, she says, telling her dad to get the band out of the studio. Roxy and Zerura then head off in the direction that she thinks the destruction is coming from. Once outside, Roxy finally sees what's going on. A group of mechanical monstrosities have made their way onto the studio lot, and now are terrorizing everyone. The worst thing is, they seem to have hit the generators for the studio, so all of the power is down. Knowing she can't let this go on, Roxy sends in all of her Pokemon, ordering them to jump into battle. Unfortunately, they are quickly outmatched, with Trebish and Whirlipede having no effect on these alien invaders. So, you're steel types, are you? Well, I guess it's up to you too, Roxy says, referring to Zerura and Maractus. They do their best, but in the end, only Zerura is able to hold its own, really only due to its small size and being able to evade most of the attacks. That is, until it is ganged up on by four of the armored bugs. Roxy tries to help by getting involved herself, but these creatures have no concern for anything outside of their own species, and attack her as well. Thinking this could be the end of her, Roxy closes her eyes, holding Zerura tightly, but her fear is replaced with relief when she hears some familiar voices giving commands. Ash, Iris, and Silent are here, and not a moment too soon, as Roxy had thought they had moved on from the city by now. Rilu and Fracture rush into the fray, fighting back the bug types from Roxy, giving her the chance to join her friends. They have little time for words, however, as the five bug Pokemon are on the attack. Iris tells everyone that they need to split up their opponents. That's the only chance they really have. They all agree, but Ash and Rilu want the red one. They have a score to settle, but there's a small problem. There are five bugs, and only four of them. They need something to take on the fifth one, but never fear. Pop Roxy has appeared. He and his steel types will provide the defense the team needs. Smiley, Roxy finds a strange sense of pride in her dad. He's grown a lot in the last year. Splitting up, the team pushes back to separate these metal bugs. Iris just so happens to end up with the one that she had before. The one that seems scared. She can feel it. Through the rage and hate, this thing is just scared and confused. It's like the anger that she senses isn't its own. Iris tells Fracture they can't hurt it. They need to calm it down. Fracture acknowledges his trainer, glowing red, just like the time it battled Ash's Drudagon. Over with Ash, he and Ryu have taken a much different approach. They are not happy with what happened back at the Verbank complex. They were attacked for no reason, and Riolu was hurt. Though it isn't in the best of shape, its aura is glowing brighter than before. It and Ash want payback. The team is on the attack, putting pressure on the leader, but this Pokemon appears to be different from the others. Its speed and power are far greater. Ash can 
can see this. And unfortunately, Rilu doesn't have enough stamina to keep the all-out assault going. Its aura does provide some protection from the energy-based attacks, but that is quickly being overpowered as well. Ash and Rilu's anger at this foreign invader has aligned, however, sparking Rilu's greatest power, its transformation. With a surge of aura, Rilu hits hard with the force palm that seems to finally cause some damage. But it's not enough, as the bug shakes off the stiffness, jumping back into battle. At Ash's command, Rilu wastes no time going back on the attack with an aura sphere. Unable to dodge it, Rilu's opponent just pushes through the amped up aura ball with what looks like an extreme speed. Ash, knowing that this could be their only shot, tells Rilu to ready itself. This is their final chance. As the attack hits, Rilu fires its trump card. Counter. The force of the move impacts with enough power that the metal bug is sent flying into a building nearby. Ash hopes that that's the end of it, as Rilu collapses from its stamina being drained. Rushing to its side, Ash picks up Rilu, wondering if it'll be okay. Luckily, it's just banged up, but after the last encounter, it won't be able to battle again. Then, the rubble from the building starts to shift as the red monster emerges. All out of options, Ash puts Rilu down and sends in his next best choice, Krokorok. The ground croc emerges ready to help its trainer. If there's anyone on Ash's team that could beat this thing besides Rilu, it would be this Pokemon. Ash gives a command for a dig, which hides Krokorok from its enemy, but out of frustration, the metal bug starts to blast the ground with its laser, forcing its opponent out. No one will keep us from our home, Ash hears echo in his mind again. This distracts him long enough for Krokorok to be overwhelmed with what looks like an next scissor, ending its reign in this battle. Darn Ash thinks, this one refuses to go down. What makes this thing so strong? He recalls his Pokemon, thinking maybe the power of fire might have a chance. Ash then sends in Lampet, but the results are the same as Lampet falls, then Electric. Eventually, Ash is down to his final Pokemon. This leaves Ash with just one option, and it's by far the worst of him, but he has no choice. This thing has taken out all of his other Pokemon and is now headed straight for Ash and Rilu. Ash readies the ball and declares, Darudagon, I choose you. Over with Iris, she is having a far easier time than Ash. The metal bug isn't as powerful. Also, there seems to be moments when the control that it has overtaken it breaks and it seems lost, but they are brief and then it's right back on the attack again. Fracture, however, is proving its place as the partner of the Chosen One. This thing's endurance is impressive. The battle has been going on for a while now and Fracture doesn't even look like it's broken a sweat. It also helps that it has the burning ore around it to insulate it from some of the attacks. Iris, thinking that she needs to increase the pressure, decides to send an Excadrill. The iron mole emerges looking around. Iris tells it that Fracture needs help. It looks hesitant at first, but is quickly convinced when it sees the reason why. The two combined a drill run with a dragon rage that hits hard, slamming the strange bug into a tree head first. Then something odd happens. It stops moving and its eyes go dark, like it's resetting or something. Iris tells her two mons to hold off. They take a defensive stance as Iris approaches it, much against the cries of her two Pokemon. As Iris gets closer, its eyes begin to light up. It's back online, but Iris doesn't waver from her choice telling it not to fear her. It's safe. The creature looks around. Are you friend? It asks Iris. Yes. Yes, we are. Now, please, can you tell me what's going on and why you and the other Pokemon are attacking everyone? Looking around, the mechanical bug realizes can trust Iris as the others haven't attacked it. Turning to her, it begins, we are called Genesect. Over with Roxy, her dad, and Silent, they actually haven't been as successful as Iris. The trio are struggling on their own. These things are hard to damage, even for steel types. However, However, they are doing their best, but they won't be able to keep this up for much longer. Back with Ash, Darudagon's presence is felt throughout the area as it emerges with a mighty roar. At first, it is confused, looking around for the village elder. But once it realizes it's free and clear to do it at once, it turns to Ash and Riolu, expecting to battle. But it is caught off guard by the sight before it. Riolu is genuinely hurt, and Ash pleads with Darudagon, Please, battle with me. This thing has been unstoppable. All of my other Pokemon have tried and failed. You're my last chance, Darudagon. Darudagon stares in a very stoic way for a moment, before firing a dragon pulse that explodes on impact. Darudagon, thinking that Ash was overreacting, turns away to challenge Riolu, but the moment its back is turned, it is met with a high-powered laser. This causes Darudagon to writhe in pain. Ash checks on it to see if it's okay, but the dragon ignores him, turning to this bug menace. With a smile, Darudagon goes on the attack, slugging it out with his powerful adversary. After all, there's nothing it likes more than a powerful opponent, but the problem is that it still won't listen to Ash as he calls for dodges and attacks. The dragon ignores Ash, battling on its own. Surprisingly, this seems to work. On
on the surface, but Ash can see that Darudagon is starting to become outmatched. Without a second set of eyes, Darudagon eventually finds itself taking blow after blow, unable to keep up. Then, a next scissor hits it in the eyes, temporarily blinding it. This opens it up for a flurry of attacks. Ash won't let this continue, and he yells, Darudagon, block with your left hand. This works, shocking Darudagon. See, Darudagon, it would be better if we worked together. If you can't see, then you can't fight. Let me be your eyes. The dragon ponders this for a moment. Can it set aside its pride this one time to work with Ash? But it won't be given the choice, as it can feel the bug on the move again. It tries to fire a counterattack, but is unsuccessful. Then Ash calls for a block on the second one. This one is avoiding. Realizing it doesn't have a choice, it begins to follow Ash's commands, much to it and his surprise. This actually works in pushing back the metallic mantis. Ash tells Trudagon it has to wait. He will be its eyes, and he will tell it when he needs to strike. Reluctantly, it calms itself to loosen up. This helps it get ready for the next altercation, which won't be long as the bug is back on the attack, firing another laser, which is countered with a dragon pulse. Then a next scissor, but it's intercepted by a dragon claw. Then the bug uses the same move that it did to put Rilu down. Extreme speed. Drudagon's taking too much damage to dodge it, and Ash can't keep up with commands at this speed, so eventually one gets through and lands. This hurts Drudagon bad, causing it to begin to doubt Ash, but its trainer won't let it, yelling to be ready. Another extreme speed is coming, and Drudagon only has one way to hit this thing hard enough to potentially damage it. With the trust wavering, Darudagon readies itself, loosening it up as much as it can with the injuries that it has sustained. But no command comes, and Darudagon is getting impatient. But Ash tells it to wait. It can feel the bug getting closer and closer, but Ash is still holding. Then, it happened. The extreme speed connects, and Ash sees his opening, calling for a revenge. Darudagon sees what Ash was trying. It swells with energy as it brings both of its claws down on the head of the bug, cratering it in the process. The eyes of the bug behemoth begin to darken as Darudagon stands victorious. It then turns to Ash, but falls over, fainting in the process. Ash lets out a sigh of relief. Finally, this thing is down. Rilu uses its aura ability to scan the robo bug. As Ash begins to get close, he recalls Darudagon, thanking it, and somewhat hopeful for the next time it releases it, that the dragon will be able to battle with Ash again. But as Ash lets his guard down even further, Rilu growls to get Ash's attention, trying to warn its trainer. As Ash turns around, the eyes on their opponent relight, and it begins to move as Ash looks on, not knowing what to do. Over with Iris and Genesect, it's almost done telling the champion about the origins of it and the rest of its species. What Iris knows is that they are looking for their home. When they awoke, they were in a strange place that didn't look like anything they had ever lived in before. That's what brought them here. In the ancient past, this was their home, but the wildlife and plants that made up their home are no longer here. Realizing there is a simple solution to this problem, Iris asked if the Genesect will trust her, not really having a choice. It nods, but as Iris gets closer, the metal bug's eyes begin to glow, and suddenly, it takes off in the direction of Ash. No, Iris thinks, as she looks up in the sky to see the others streaking off in the same direction. Over with Ash, he's now in a state of paralyzed fear. Everything he's tried, nothing can stop the onslaught of this Pokemon. With all of its rage aimed toward Ash, the bug charges a cannon for one final time, as the other species touch down to do the same. It has taken control of them, suppressing their free will. Now, all they want is the same thing their leader wants, to end this problem before it, for the pain Ash has caused it. With five laser cannons now at full power, and Riolu unable to move due to its injuries, Ash is now in the line of sights of these killing machines, and he has no escape. Firing all at once, the lasers combine into one, finding its way to the target, as the spot that Ash is in erupts with an explosion. Iris and the others arrive, looking on in horror. Ash, no, Iris mumbles to herself. As the dust clears, there's just a hole where Ash stood. His friend friends are in shock. How could they let this happen? How could they not get here in time? All but one think Ash is lost. And that's Riolu. He can still sense his trainer, but where? However, this search is interrupted when the five Genestic go in for another attack. They begin to charge their cannons again. Iris orders her Pokemon in, as she's the only one with any left. But Extra Joe and Fracture quickly fall to the combined laser of the Genestic squad. Growing tired of all these interruptions, the leader then orders its companions to erase everyone like they did that human boy. The lasers, or what Iris has come to know as Technoblasts, begin to fire. They are moving too fast to dodge, striking one after another as Iris watches her 
her friends vanish into a cloud of dust like Ash did. She is the last one. Iris falls to her knees. How could she, as the champion of the region, let this happen? Now effectively given up, Iris has resigned herself to the fate before her. As the lasers close in, it's interrupted by an aura sphere. Looking at Riolu, Iris wonders if it fired the attack. But Riolu is just as puzzled as her. Then, they hear a voice. It's Ash. Iris, that was a close one. Are you okay? Ash, where are you? I'm right here, he says. But she sees nothing. Ash, I can't see you. Then, before her, materializes all of her friends. Iris doesn't know what to make of this. She begins to ask questions. But Ash says there's no time. They need to deal with this first, and they have the help of an old friend, as someone familiar to both Ash and Iris appear. Meloetta, Iris says. That's right, Ash says. It appears to have come back here to recover after the last time we saw it. I guess it really likes Pokestar Studios. The Melody Pokemon takes a stance before the five foes. They have hurt its friends, and ruined its home. This ends now. Riolu is happy to see its old friend, and in doing so, its aura begins to surge. Ash looks at Riolu. Hey buddy, do you think you can battle one more time? It nods, knowing that Meloetta will need all the help that it can get. Fracture and Excadrill then awaken with the same mindset as the others. They have just enough in the tank for one final battle with these things. What follows next is an all-out brawl as the Genesect are pushed to the limit, with Meloetta and Riolu heading the charge on the red one. It seems that it can't maintain the mind control and battle two opponents at the same time, and one by one, the Genesect fall until only the leader remains. Riolu surges with Or one last time. Buddy, can you keep it up, Ash? It nods to Ash, readying its stance, transforming. Meloetta then shocks everyone as it takes on a transformation of its own. The two are in sync as they rush in and barrage Genesect with Aura Spheres. This combined with the damage from the previous battles it had is finally enough to end this nightmare as it collapses under its own weight. Ash tells Meloetta and Riolu they need to put a stop to this thing permanently. If they don't, this will happen again. Riolu agrees, channeling all of its aura into one final Aura Sphere. But Iris and Meloetta stand in its way. Ash, listen to me. They're not bad. They're just looking for a place to call home. How do you know this, Iris? They literally tried to end the life of everyone here, but I talked to one of them. I know. It opened up to me. They're just scared. They're Pokemon that were experimented on, that are just looking for a place in this world. But if we let them go, Iris, that doesn't mean they won't return. True, Iris says, but we can't just end them because we think it's right. That's not for us to decide. Reluctantly, Ash tells Riolu to stand down, so it dissipates the attack it had prepared, falling out of its transformation and unconscious in the process. Watching the humans decide how they should deal with the Genesect and Ash tend to Riolu, Meloetta transforms back into its normal state, capturing the attention of everyone. Its eyes then begin to glow as the Ren Genesect, who is still out cold, is lifted into the air. Meloetta, what are you doing, Ash says. It just smiles. Ash, it's going to help the Genesect find a home, Iris says. Really? But before anyone can say anything, Meloetta begins to glow, and then a flash, they're gone. Looking on, Ash hopes Meloetta Meloetta is okay. Every time he sees it, they only have moments. Then, it's gone again. This time, Riolu didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. With nothing else to do now that the threat has been dealt with, Ash and his friends head back to the Pokemon Center. After a few days of healing and getting their Pokemon checked out, Ash, Iris, and Silent bid farewell to Roxy and her dad once again, setting it off for Philosophy Ranch, while Roxy resumes her practice at Pokestar Studios. Now, we flash over to the other side of Unova as we follow up with N. He's been rummaging through the giant chasm for what seems like an eternity, but what he seeks, he has finally found. I now have what I need to beat my father. The only chance we have of ending this once and for all, he says, as N caresses a strange rock in his hand. And that is where we are going to end today's journey. And that's all we have for What If Ash Was Born in Unova, Season 2, Part 10. How do you guys feel about this one? How do you feel about the Genesect and how they attacked Pokestar Studios and the Verbank Complex? How do you feel about Meloetta taking them off somewhere? And where do you think it took them? And of course, how do you feel about Roxy getting the chance to headline the Pokemon League competition? Let me know in the comments down below. And now, to sign off the video in the best way we know how, to thank the sponsors, the patrons, Silverheart Soul, Robert, Vegito Gaming 78, Andrew McCartney, Holosiv, Julian Rodriguez, Ruben Watson, Lord Explosion Murder, Assassin 139, Flyer 943, Shadow Dragon, Tavern Landlord, K McKnight, Kevin Atron, Maker YAG, Drax, True Vault, Dalen Silva, Fox King, Dalian Petit, Warren E. Taylor, Plus Ultraman, Megger, Nelson Bautista, Mike Logan, Eddie, 
and Team Valor. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.